It was a pivotal, penultimate weekend at Silverstone for the 2014 Dunlop MSA British Touring Car Championship, as a crowd of over 30,000 packed into the home of British motor racing to see the action firsthand. Colin Turkington came into the weekend with a 55-point advantage in the standings, but Silverstone is a favourable circuit for his closest rival Jason Plato, setting the scene for a terrific trio of races. In qualifying on Saturday, it was the MG of Plato that set the pace, and his early fast lap was enough to secure pole position for the third year in a row at the Northamptonshire venue. Turkington impressed with 45 kilograms of success ballast on board, with a time just 64 thousandths of a second shy of the double champion. Turkington didn't get the best start off the line as the lights went out for race one, but he led the pack into turn one. Plato slotted in behind and Matt Jackson blasted by Sam Tordoff to take third place. Plato immediately put the pressure on the championship leader and as the car stormed down Wellington Strait on lap three, he made a superb pass on the inside on the entry to Brooklands. As Plato led the way, it was a hard-fought battle behind with Turkington, Matt Jackson and the two Volkswagens of Alain Menu and Aaron Smith running nose to tail. Adam Morgan soon joined the party in his Mercedes and after some intense pressure on Smith Volkswagen he took sixth place. His efforts were to go unrewarded though as he pulled off with an electrical problem later in the race. Further down the order there were some superb scraps notably as the two Honda drivers Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden tried to make progress having started way down the order. The pair was involved in bumper bashing battles with the likes of Jack Clark, Tom Ingram and Fabrizio Giovanardi. Shedden had a huge sideways moment as he made contact with the Toyota of Ingram, but the Scot recovered to a point scoring 14th place. Ingram was involved in further drama late on as his car speared across the gravel on the exit of Cops. The yellow flags in sector one allowed Jackson to close right up to the back of Turkington's BMW on the last lap. Despite his best efforts though, Turkington held on to take second with Jackson just a tenth of a second behind him in third. Race two began much in the same way as the opener, with Turkington grabbing the advantage off the line. Plato fought back on lap two with an identical move into Brooklands, though Turkington only just gave him enough space to squeeze through. The Honda Civic Tora of Shedden continued its valiant efforts to make progress through the field battling first with the Volkswagen of Jack Goff, before clashing with the Audi of Rob Austin. The number 52 Honda was certainly on the limit as he had a big sideways moment going through turn one on lap 17 that dropped him down a couple of spots. While Shedden was trying to break into the top 10, it was a Volkswagen charge for the final podium position. As just past half distance, Alain Menu made a great move on Jackson to grab third. At the same time, Menu's teammate Aaron Smith was also flying, coming past the BMW of Rob Collard for fifth. He set off in pursuit of Jackson and piled on the pressure, but couldn't make his move before the end of the race. With two laps remaining, the race came to an abrupt conclusion, as Collard just clipped the recovering forward of Jack Clark and was sent into a huge roll. Collard was understandably shaken up in the dramatic incident that escaped serious injury. With the result declared, it made it a double for Plato, with Turkington following a menu scoring his second podium of the year in third. Those two hard-fought wins helped Plato to keep his title hopes alive, but with the top seven reversed for the day's third race, it was the Ford of former champion Giovanardi that would line up on pole with Tordoff's MG joining the Italian on the front row. Plato and Turkington were back in the pack. There was drama though even before the start when the MG's engine expired in a cloud of smoke and Tordoff's car had to be pushed away. That left a gap on the front row. As the lights went out, Giovanardi made a strong start as a fast starting teammate Jackson snatched second place from the Volkswagen of Smith. Further back there was chaos as James Cole was nudged into a spin and collected by Rob Holland's unfortunate Audi. Back at the front, the flying Jackson wasted no time squeezing past Giovanardi to grab the lead and a couple of laps later, Smith was up into second place. As the two leaders made their escape, the Italian found his mirrors filled with Turkington's BMW, Menu's Volkswagen, Plato's MG and the chasing pack. 
Turkington finally grabbed the bull by the horns and muscled his way past Giovanardi. But the Ford fought back, with Menu and Plato also looking to capitalise as the battle kicked off. It was three abreast, with Plato in hot pursuit. Then, as the cars braked hard for Beckett's, Plato's hard-charging MG tapped Turkington's rear, sending the BMW into Giovanardi, knocking the Ford into a big slide. Turkington and Plato emerged from the confusion in third and fourth places, with the BMW fending off the MG's attentions over the closing laps to secure the final spot on the podium. Up front, Jackson sailed home clear to take his second win of the season, with a delighted Smith finishing a safe second. It was third place Turkington though who had most to celebrate. By finishing third, he takes a 50 point advantage into the grand final at Brands Hatch. With the champagne sprayed, Louise Goodman caught up with the series leader. Well, Colin, at times a nail biting weekend, but ultimately a successful weekend for you here at Silverstone. Yeah, a really good day for me. Um, you know, it's not often you come away not winning and uh, and really happy. But today, to, to finish on the podium three times and to uh, you know keep the gap, you know, at a good margin to, to Jason was exactly my target. So uh, you know, I really had to put the gloves up today and and fight hard. And uh, you know, race three could be a defining one. Uh, you know, it's, I was pretty keen on on beating Jason at least uh, at least once today. So uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, Leave here tired, but uh, really happy. Uh, the fight goes on to Brands Hatch. Um, that's going to be some weekend, isn't it? It's going to be a nail biter for for everybody involved. Um, you know, I have a good cushion, and uh, you know, people talk about one hand on the title, but one hand is no good. You know, you, you must have two on it. So, um, you know, I think this uh, little one series will be strong around the Grand Prix Grand Prix track at Brands. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll keep the focus and. And work hard and I think it'll be similar uh, a similar type pattern to, to today. Jason will be quick and uh, I'll probably end up tailing him again. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I really want this. You've been here before, you know, going into the final round of the championship in the lead, but still got to clinch it. You ended up winning that time. It's a slightly different situation this time. You've got more experience and you've also got more, more points leeway, haven't you? Yeah, it's, at least I only have um, one other driver to, to worry about. Last time, 2009, there was... There's three of us went to round 30 and, uh, you know, separated by, by five points. So uh, so it's I think it's just down to me and Jason now. But, um, you know, I'm probably even more hungry now than I was in, in 2009. Um, you know, I'm pre pretty keen to uh, do the business. And hardly a better place for the title showdown than Brands Hatch. It's a, it's a magnificent track, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's an epic place. And, um, you know, there's not one driver doesn't doesn't like driving that circuit. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, again. It's not going to be easy. Uh, I don't expect to to get it handed on a plate, and uh, you know we need to be really good. See you there. See you there.